the street now in London and say, well, who's Mr. Scruff? And um, people will look at you and say, well, they don't know. That's because they ain't with it. He's got to the stage where he's so successful he can sell out the forum, you know, in London. That's kind of, in its own quiet way, a phenomenon. Badass. Badass. He's scruffalicious, he's blunt-tastical. He's Mr. Scruff. <laughs> Tonight was no exception. You've got that ginger geek there playing records, but it's me, right? It's all me. My name's Byron. I'm the office gibbon. That's what they call me. They beat me when you're not looking. They're all posh kids. the Forum. This is my, one of my favourite big old venues in London. Tonight I'm playing for six whole hours without a tea break. Everyone here is like really like, they're not anal, they're up for it, it's cool. If that makes sense. He tries to incorporate old school a little bit more than everybody else. Which I like. The tea stall started when we started the club. I like drinking tea as often as possible, so having that in a club is a dream come true for me. Um, and we just sell tea, 50p a cup, and give the money to charity, basically. I like the way it's different, it changes all the time, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Scroff is good. He's good. One of the things that's most interesting about Mr. Scruff is it's this kind of ginger, bald, geeky looking, looking guy with these little stick man sort of drawings that look like potatoes called Mr. Scruff. And he's become, he's a DJ and he's become enormously successful at a time when dance music and clubbing is, is essentially going down the toilet. He makes great albums and he's a phenomenal DJ. Yeah, he's definitely, um, you know, hot. Like a good cup of tea. Excuse me, madam. Yes, sir. Uh, may I have a warm beverage? Certainly. Tea? Yes, please. Well, thank you. Can I have some milk, please? Sugar, too, if you like. Oh, no, thank you. I don't like to spoil the flavour. Look at the colour of that brew. That's going nice orangey-brown, which tells me it's about ready. Not at all. In the, the mid to late 90s, there was this phenomenon of the superstar DJ, and he's sort of the antithesis of that. What Scruff is doing is not really part of a trend or, you know, a movement per se, like the dance scene, which obviously got too big and people realised that most of it was rubbish. He's definitely got a unique sense of history with the music he listens to, and obviously, obviously the record crates that he pillages from town to town, so yeah. I just like hearing, like, when the next track will come on, just being like, all right, what's he going to do next? It's like, it's Saturday night, we're having a fucking disco, do you know what I mean? It's as innocent as that, and that's what was, has been missing in a lot of clubs and a lot of music, you know, scenes or whatever, for a while now, you know what I mean? He's, he's blowing it up again, man. Lovely, thumbs up for London. Let's see how they're doing, you, Keith. Then we go over, overnight on our uh, 
cheeky tour bus to Newquay for the Run to the Sun Bug Jam Festival. Basically loads of nutters with a Volkswagen Beetles. Morning. Morning. I've got no makeup on yet. Day <laughs> <laughs> two on the bus. Into the sunlight. Hello, new key. Good crew of us. Party bus. There's a few along for the ride. I think Fran and Andrea are along for the ride. I used to work on the tea shop on the tea store merch, so this is the first gig actually that I've done where I've not been working. But I usually work with Square Five Producers Radio Show. So I've come along for the jolly. Well, I was successful before I met Andy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that all my mates' mothers love him to bits, and they all think. He's a Mr. Man character. <laughs> could do with the brew. Yeah, I've been seeing Andrea for about five years. She's a DJ as well. As we met in a club, funnily enough. Um, you know, we both have a love of 80s soul music, both growing up in Manchester. We used to just play each other all these old uh, soul records, and yeah, we just got on really well. He's very, he's very calm and placid, and he never loses his temper. Just a really nice guy. Everyone I know who owns a Beetle is a bit daft. You know, like everyone I know who collects records like me is you know, slightly insane and got a few behavioural problems. So I kind of identify with these mad obsessive types. I come from Stockport, which is famous for um, hats, uh, Robinson's Bitter, and the viaduct, which apparently is the largest brick built structure in Northern Europe. I started DJing, I was about 11, um, after hearing an electro mix album, and that kind of got me into breakdancing and all that tracksuit wearing kind of 1980s kids nonsense. So yeah, just started playing electro and then hip hop and a bit of soul and that moved into house and jazz and funk and reggae and just through the 80s got into more and more different music. I studied fine art uh, before I became a disc jockey or you know sort of during and I also worked in quicksave for eight years which was nice until I could leave and you know the DJ paid for itself so yeah pretty much student supermarket and then off into the DJ stratosphere. <laughs> And deeper and deeper and deeper and My love of whelks uh, particularly comes from um, being near the sea as a child and inhaling so much brine that um, I had a whelk disorder from quite an early age. But the same goes for cod, salmon, barnacles especially. But that spreads to all kinds of sea life. You know, if it's in the brine, I consider it mine. So, yes, bring it on. That sea out there is just full of lovely, friendly fish waiting to come and be projected on the wall of a club near you. Uh, when I'm not DJing, I like to drink tea and eat biscuits and sleep. It's like rats in, Lo in London. I'm never more than uh, seven metres away from a record. I like to stroll in the country looking at people on unfeasibly small motorbikes like this chap. It's like a mechanical farmyard out here, it's great. I put Miracle Ground on my hat. So expect, you know, expecting a, a club night and a lot of different people have different agendas, so... Yes? Good night for those that spent 150 quid in costumes that couldn't dance. I didn't enjoy it at all. I just found this kind of thing difficult. It's not controlled enough for us to be able to do what we do well. We wouldn't let us on. Why? We were booked tonight to dance, hip-hop and street dance. We bought costumes. We wouldn't let us on. Why? But hey, you had a good night anyway. 
I don't want to start slagging people off, but it wasn't a very good gig. Yeah, for me, I think some people enjoyed it, but generally, dancers and glow sticks and uh, the whole kind of uh, festival thing isn't really me. So. I've never met some, so, so many embittered dancers that I, because I told them they couldn't go on stage and do their piece. Well, I just spoke to the DJ and he said that it wasn't his thing. Dancers weren't his thing. Where does the argument go beyond that? The argument goes beyond, we were all in the audience tonight and everyone was saying, why weren't we up on stage? They all kind of clubbed together and waited till quarter to four when they knew we weren't going to be asked. Let's dance! And all went, let's go! They rushed And all ran up the stairs. What he does is listen, what he does. It doesn't DJ involve aside. rave dancers and like, you know, They're not big... rave dancers. No, but listen. I've been trained for 15 years in hip hop and street dance. No, but listen. I didn't even get a chance to dance tonight and I've been practicing for months for this. I think this is about you and your ego. It's not about the nights, too. He's you? got his own ID, he's got his own visuals. So have we? He's got... Yeah. Well, that's what, what I mean. Works. Yeah. I think we were disrespectful. He we thought we weren't good enough. Well, what to I'm dance saying, yeah. my part in sort of conclusion, hopefully, is that you don't understand the full picture. No, maybe I don't. Nice to meet you. See you later. <laughs> we were all here for a good time tonight. You weren't. You were here to fucking pick yourself up. Hey, Stuart, you're this for a living, right? And so I'm, do I'm, we, mate. Yeah, right. and you're so expecting me to take your point of view as superior to mine. Is that superior? Listen, our two points of view are clashing. What grown-ups do is recognise that and walk right, away. Right. Oh. The argument to me was, don't slag my mate off because you don't know what you're talking about. <coughs> and you look and like Adam Ann. But, but, but it was about two completely ide different ideas of what a good night should be. And like I said before, because we're such, you know, so careful about how we manipulate an environment to, to make an evening very special, and that was completely the, the, the kind of... The you can't even describe it, can you? <laughs>
what I look for in, in a record is, is personality and, and just something about it that grabs me. You'll, you'll like it to some degree, whether you're both playing it. Yeah. It's a slightly slower uh, riff than normal, but uh, soulful beyond belief, so you'll like it to Yeah, it sounds like my back. Yeah. Uh, 114. Okay. Thanks very much. A month, I reckon I spent about 2,000 quid on records. But when, whenever I've, when I was earning 30 quid a week, I was spending 30 quid a week on records, so it's kind of, as my wages have gone up, my DJ spending's just gone daft. But a lot of old records, a lot of new records, I've got to keep up with it. That's, you know, that's my duty to kind of be on top of everything. He makes great records as well, you know. The last album I thought was excellent, you know. This is the Scruff Nerve Center, my shambolic studio. There's a effects box, drum machine sampler, classic hip hop machine, hip hop drum machine sampler with a cushion. EQ there, compression, sampler, turntables, mixer, CD player. I recorded on my last Trouser Jazz album down here. It's like, you know, it's homemade, but really soulful and, and fat in a weird, strange way. It's got a really unique, Unique sound. All his tunes are like really quirky, but intelligently quirky. But they're put together really well. Yeah. I mean, he got the bass, you know. But you like always a... know when, if Mr. Scruff's on, yeah, on you can tell. You're like, oh, is this, is this Scruff? And that's a good thing for a DJ. The general process of making music is just starting off with a, a cheeky little seed, whether it's a drum break or um, a sample or something like that. And then you just put it with something else. And once you've got two elements, you've almost got a cheeky little conversation there. Yeah, the drawing started kind of when I was at school as well. I've always been sort of a bit daft and um, they've kind of been in the present form since I was about 15. And just, you know, pretty kind of random nonsense. Uh, Monty Python, that kind of daft, eccentric British humour. So, they've, yeah, I've always been, you know, I've always done cartoons, I've always loved drawings. As we're in Birmingham, we're going to do some special custom visuals for tonight. I'm going to scribble on here, give it to our man Jim, he's going to put it in his scanner, which will go into a computer, which will go into a screen and everyone will be able to see. Ooh, me heat custard. As I came along on the trouser jazz tour, and after that we kind of stepped it up a bit in doing, using the laptop and the scanners. My favourite part, I don't really discriminate. A good pasty is as good as a, you know, a, a class of quiche or a flan, or, or, also as a pie. Well, five <coughs> different types of pie, harmoniously, living together on the same piece of paper. Mr Scruff, select 14, take number one. Come to Birmingham and eat top scram. This is Adam, promoter from Birmingham. Hello there. He looks a bit like Noel Edmonds. I do. <laughs> And, and Barry Gibb as well, apparently. He forces us to eat vast amounts of beans every time we come down to Birmingham. So it's just the, the healthy change. I can barely contain myself. I think it's going to be um, chocker. They've already sold a lot of tickets. The sound system is fantastic. We've just been playing a load of reggae before, and it was scary. Just been blown back by this huge wall of sound. Uh, a few people have heard of him. But I think that's mainly down to me, because I put him on when no one had heard of him. There's about 12 people here. Yeah. And so I think he would admit that it was down to me that he's the man he is now. Is that true? Yeah, definitely. I think he's, he's sort of um, eight hours straight and uh, he's really diverse in what he plays. His commitment to endurance. <laughs> yeah. We always have a good dance. We always have a really good dance. Um, it makes you smile. Yeah, they're not too serious. You don't, have to, you don't have to have a particular dance or anything to it. You can just be as silly or as relaxed as you want to be. No, I mean, he's played Birmingham so many times recently, and every time the, uh, the crowd just gets bigger and bigger and bigger.
thing is in a night is you had a lot of people who were following, um, you know, this kind of mono style culture and play, of playing one particular subgenre and not doing it very well. That's kind of become so overexploited that people are looking for something a bit different. My whole thing is about having a good vibe and bringing people together and, and sharing my love of music and buzzing off how people react to what I do. Thumbs up for Birmingham. A proper evening, especially after Newquay and the, uh, the knicker and light stick fracas. That was absolutely amazing. It's an intriguing kind of success because it's happened sort of without the media's permission. You haven't seen, you know, Mr. Scruff on the cover of the face, perhaps for obvious reasons, you know. Just like an independent band, just building themselves up by gigging a lot and not necessarily getting any radio play, but just building up a fan base, he's done that really well. Things have become very polarised in musical culture generally. And at one end you've got this kind of fame academy, pop idol, music as a form of light entertainment, music as another branch on the show business tree, it's fairly close to like Scylla Black or something like that. And at the other hand, people have gone to the other extreme, I mean, you could call Scruff the sort of soulful new John Peel. Yeah, Madonna said she had my album and liked it, and then for the next three years, all journalists asked me about was Madonna. Uh, end of story. It's not being interested in a kind of pre-packaged notion of, of kind of instant celebrity, I suppose. I think that's why people love him. I think a lot of people, they've heard the tunes and everything and imagine to see some fat boy slim up there having it large and they look and it's Andy mm. and he's a normal bloke. Eating fish. I'd advise you lot to move back. <laughs> Yeah, I got three pounds a weekend, hence my small pot belly. Let's talk. Oh <laughs> Would you like to give me a hand, darling? I'll give you a hand, darling. Let's, let's see what we can do. One pound. And what flavour are these, Andy? These are haddock, turmeric, spinach and potato flavour pies. Okay. Let's tuck in. To a tasty pie. Put some out of sauce there. Mm. In fact, how much would you pay for this down at London? A gourmet pie. A gourmet pie. A nice bit of salad and a bottle of dragon stout. <laughs> <laughs> About 80 quid. 80 quid, yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you.